Yep. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. Integrity is when what you say, what you do, what you think, and who you are all come from the same place. Thank you very much. And before we, I call the meeting to order, the public has asked through communications with several aldermen in my office to please wear your mic appropriately. A lot of uh, people that are watching uh, us now live are not able to hear the, uh, the discussions and debate. Also, this is the first uh, meeting that is not on Channel 8. Uh, it's 990 if you uh, have digital and 95 if you don't. So this is the first meeting. If for some reason somebody asks you tomorrow why was it on Channel 8, please <coughs> let them know that. Hopefully uh, Mike at the radio station will give them another reminder tomorrow morning. Uh, okay. Well, the 13th regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Surik. Excuse. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Excuse. 14 present. Quorum is present. At this time, we uh, all rise to uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. Alderman Rinfleisch, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Rindfleisch. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. First is uh, uh, Alderman Vicki Meyer advising that uh, she's resigning from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force Committee because of conflicts with other committees. And that... Uh, I need a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, regretfully, I do move to accept and file. Second. Motion second to accept resignation under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. Next is an <clears throat> email from Rob Schrader uh, advising that uh, he's resigning effective August 29th and he's no longer with Alliant Energy, and he was on the Board of Electrical Contractors. And that lies over? What that lie over? I don't think so. I don't think so. I need a motion to uh, accept, uh, accept and file the resignation. I'd make a motion to accept and file the resignation. Second. Motion and second to accept and file. <sighs> Any discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. And the next is a, an email from Janet Carter advising that uh, due to her responsibilities at the Landmark Towers, uh, <clears throat> it's prevented her from attending a lot of the meetings on the Commission on Aging, and she's uh, asking the mayor to make another appointment. President Hanna, motion. <clears throat> I make a motion to accept and file the resignation. Second. Motion, second to accept and file the resignation. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Did it? That's it on president. Okay. Next item is mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean, please continue. I hereby submit the following appointment for your con consideration. Michael Warnches to be considered for appointment to the Board of Electrical Examiners to fill the unexpired position of Robert Schrader, whose term expires on 4-30-2010, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. And Sheriff Powell Yang, excuse me, Sheriff Powell Vang to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Janet Carter, whose term expires 4 30, 2010. That also lies over. And uh, <clears throat> Jody Brooks to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry as the Community Recreation Department representative to fill the unexpired term of Harold Beeble, whose term expires 4 30, 2009. Signed by the Mayor. That also lies over. 
Uh, we have a com confirmation of mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. And uh, hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. This was uh, submitted the prior council meeting to the Water Safety Task Force. I don't know that I'll read no, all the names. This said night over from the last meeting. Any motion to ex uh, confirm? Motion to confirm the appointments. Second. Thank you. Motion and second to confirm appointments under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Concluded. Thank you very much, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Um, first this evening is Dwayne Jordan. Is Dwayne here? I don't see Dwayne. Okay, next on the list would be Jen Butler. Is Jen here? Jen, would you mind coming up to the mic right here, please? And if you can get the mic kind of close to you so we can hear you, if you move those, so, there you go, silver part. Okay, I hope it doesn't beep. It won't. <laughs> and I need your home address, Jen. 1529 North 25th Street. North 25th? Mm-hmm. And you will have five <coughs> minutes. Okay. My family and I moved here nine years ago because my husband got a job at Kohler. The reason we chose to live in the city of Sheboygan instead of Oostburg, Plymouth, Sheboygan Falls, Howard's Grove, or other surrounding areas was because Sheboygan was one of the safest places to raise a family. Last month, that sense of security was in question. I felt that the safety of my family, as well as others in my neighborhood, was in jeopardy. If it weren't for the article in the Sheboygan Press on the 17th, Many of us would have never known what was going on with the chance of sex offenders being placed in our neighborhood until it was too late. On Monday, September 22nd, the citizens that lived in the area originally in question came to the Committee of the Whole meeting and demanded that our city council stand up and fight for the whole community, not just 95%. I can't believe that without that effort, our city officials would have even contemplated the idea of placing large amounts of sex offenders in one isolated, highly child populated area of our community. The audacity of even a few aldermen pushing for a 1500 foot buffer was totally insensitive of the rest of the community. Despite what the original proposal said with a 2000 foot buffer, it was stated by certain individuals that they would take what they could get. That is not proper attitude a city official should have. You have the citizens of this community's lives at stake here. The well-being of everyone in this community should be considered when making life-changing decisions as you so often do. I wouldn't say that the citizens of the city of Sheboygan are going to get a false sense of security with this proposal. We are not naive. We understand probably better than most what resides here in our city already. We see it every day. I do believe, however, that we have proven to you that we will not lie down and let our city officials pass <clears throat> proposals that will endanger or cause fear to certain areas of our community. This is our home and we will do whatever it takes to protect it, even if it means standing up and fighting against those who were appointed to do just that. I am one voice standing up here for many. We have collected several pet petitions of concerned citizens worried about the vote that will take place here tonight. I understand that many of you are concerned about the legal ramifications of your vote tonight. It is my belief, as well as many of our concerned citizens, that you look at the total picture. We are a community of high family values as well as high social values. It is imperative that you as the leaders of our community stand up and ensure that we are able to keep those values. It is not the state of Wisconsin that has made our community strong but the people and the values they employ. As I stand here before you tonight, I ask that you not only think about the families in our community, but of your own as well. Keep in mind, as you place your vote tonight, the effect it will have on all of us. I urge you to vote yes on this proposal with the stated 2,000 foot buffer and the added places of worship. Black out the entire city. Remember, this is our home. We need to keep Sheboygan one of the safest places to raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is Sarah, is it Cruz? Sarah, would you like to come up to the mic, please? Thank you. 
And Sarah, I need your home address. 1310 Kentucky Avenue. And can you pull the mic kind of close to you so that everybody can hear you? Oh. That's, a, that's close. Okay. <laughs> 1310 Ken Kentucky, Kentucky Avenue. Okay, hold on. This is it. All right, and you will have five minutes. All right, go you. ahead. I am opposed for the ban on the sexual offenders living in Sheboygan. Now, I understand that we are in fear of our children's safety and other females and other victims in this society and in the city of Sheboygan. But we have to consider that these offenders already did their time. They are already labeled as sexual offenders. And the surrounding neighborhoods are informed of a sexual offender that is coming to stay in their neighborhood. Now, these are human beings. Yes, they have done some things wrong, and there are repeated offenders. Now, I would take into consideration doing this for the repeated offenders. But for those who have done just one mistake, to consider them a repeated offender and that they will offend again, that's wrong. There are other circumstances where it could have been a younger relationship where a sexual offense had taken place, but it was mutual. You also have those who have families of their own. What happens if you move them and they have children of their own into a, one set area? You are putting their own children in a high risk area. If there is an accident and all, everybody else is not around and there's only a sexual offender in that area, do you expect a sexual offender to help that certain person because the rest of the city, city, excuse me, city had shunned them away? They are human beings. They want to get themselves better, but they can't when the city is turning them away. They are already labeled. They know what they have done, and they have done their time, and they took their classes. Please consider about the other people besides our children, and our loved ones. The offenders are just, that they are offenders, but some are repeated, but one or two or three people in, Sh in Sheboygan may not have just repeated several times. They could have just done one mistake. They go to church. Why are you taking their church and religion away from them? They themselves have a a right to go to church themselves. They have done their time. Do you not think that they put their heart and soul into the Lord Jesus Christ while they were in, incarcerated? They need their own religion to keep their mind strong. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next will be Gail Cruz. Gail, if you could come up to the mic. And Gail, what is your home address? 1310 Kentucky Avenue. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Okay. I, too, am opposed at this uh, sexual offender law. I feel that each case of a sex offender should be seen as a case-by-case -case basis. Some offenders, yes, repeat. They should be looked at as placing elsewhere. But those sexual offenders that have, placed one, that have done one thing wrong, I agree. They should be looked at. Perhaps it was a relationship that went wrong. She was 16, she lied about her age. A lot of it has happened and occurred. What happens if you have a juvenile sex offender? What happens when they turn 18 years of age? Are we gonna kick them out? On the other hand, I agree that we need to keep our children safe, but a case-by-case -case basis is maybe what we need to look at rather than saying you're a sexual <coughs> offender. You go with the rest of them, live someplace else, we don't want you here. We want a safe city, yes, but look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. What if the offenders suffer from psychological or mental disorders that are being treated with drugs and therapy? You're now going to take them, push them away, and leave them in an area where they may not be able to get that same quality of care, that same ability, because you're pushing them to a different location where they may not be able to get their therapy or their medication. There lies another issue. 
What are they going to do for their therapy, their medication, if you're pushing them someplace else? I don't think it's fair. If you have a juvenile that's offended when he turns 18, what are we saying to them? We don't want you here. Get out. They're 18. Not a lot of children at that age actually know what the world is like. And you're going to push them aside, put them in a new location amongst other sexual offenders. And they're only going to learn by the ways of these other sexual offenders. They need to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Some offenders are, are light in what they've done. Okay, put them in a community where they're still getting treatment and it was a one-time deal. If you have a repeat offender, all right, let's find some place where we can put them so that our community can feel safe. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we have Delcy Johnson. Delcy, if you could come up, please. And Dulcie, your home address, please. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. <clears throat> okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Perez and members of the council. The fire department issued their second quarter ambulance report on July 28th, known by some as the Swiss Cheese Report. As you know, the fire department operates three ambulances full time with a fourth on standby. The state requires two paramedics per ambulance. But Chief Latusky only recounts for the expenses of poor four paramedics, when in fact he has stated that he needs 19 to run the system. Chief Latusky recently requested and received permission to hire two paramedics to replace two who are leaving, which, per Chief Latusky, leaves the department with 19, five short of the authorized strength. Using the number 19, total expenses for the first six months of 2008 figures to be $718,799. The department listed receipts of $243,311 through June 30th, which gives a negative difference of $475,488, not a profit of $13,387 as reported by the fire department. And that deficit becomes even greater when you add unknown administrative costs, which are not reported. <clears throat> Additionally, one must note that the fire department's overtime for the first six months of 2008 is almost $20,000 higher than for the same period of 2007. And the big landmark fire took place in the first half of 2007. Fire services overtime for the first six months of 2007 was $15,403 compared with $34,386 for the first six months of 2008. The total number of fires in the first six months of 2007 was 105 and only 55 for the same period of 2008. So overtime for fire services in 2008 more than doubled though the department responded to only half as many fire calls. The total number of rescue calls in 2007 was 1,008 compared to 1,407 in 2008. So it would seem that the need for 20,000 more in overtime pay is due to increased rescue calls and not more fire calls. Additionally, if because of the loss of revenue from City of Sheboygan ambulance calls, Orange Cross does not meet their operating budget and should require a subsidy from the county, you and all of your constituents will pay the subsidy, and that cost should be considered as an expense in the fire department's year-end reporting. I attended the Committee of the Whole meeting at which the ambulance second quarter report was presented by the fire department, and as I remember, all of the questions asked by council members were merely, merely gratuitous. As elected representatives of the city of Sheboygan, I urge you to question the information that you receive from department heads and not accept it ipso facto. Finally, a word about roving ambulances. When the council voted to give the ambulance service to the fire department, I believe you were voting for ambulances to be stationed at the fire stations. But it seems that the ambulance have taken to roaming. When I met with Mayor Perez in late May or early June, I told him that late on Saturday morning, May 17th, I was working in my yard when a fire department ambulance came cruising down Michigan Avenue, headed east, no siren, no flashing lights, no speeding, just a nice leisurely pace. It crossed Third Street towards the lake and turned north. 
I thought to myself, oh yeah, they take ambulances out to do building inspections. But then I realized they probably weren't doing building inspections on Saturday morning. And secondly, there are no buildings to inspect north of Michigan Avenue along the lakefront. So what was this ambulance doing? The mayor made some comment about the high price of fuel and asked me for my phone number. End of that story. The mayor has never called me with any explanation. <coughs> this errant ambulance is not an isolated incident. When I mentioned it to an acquaintance, they told me they had observed an ambulance cruising down Geely Avenue, turning south on 3rd Street with no apparent destination in sight, no sirens, no flashing lights, no speeding. If this ambulance had been returning from Memorial Hospital to any fire station, their route would not take them down 3rd Street. The afternoon of Friday, September 26, I was on my way home from an errand at about 3 o'clock, and at 6th and Pan, I saw a fire department ambulance. No siren, no flashing lights, no speeding. This would not be the route for any ambulance returning from either hospital. I read Med 1 on the back of the ambulance. <clears throat> The ambulance proceeded, proceeded towards the lake on Pan and turned north at the armory. This was also my route home. The ambulance continued on past the Y and the north side beach, and at that point I decided to learn what the mission of this ambulance might be. It continued north towards North Point, up the hill, onto Lincoln Avenue to North 3rd Street, where it turned south on 3rd Street to Superior, then west on Superior Excuse to Excuse me, Dulcie, Street. would you like your extra minute? Please. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> At 8th and Superior, it turned south and continued to New York Avenue, where it backed into the fire station. There were two men in blue uniforms in the cab of the ambulance. Yes, I wasted gas in following the ambulance beyond my destination, but I buy my own gas. I would be surprised to learn that the incidents that I have mentioned are isolated incidents. Fire department ambulances should not be needlessly cruising around town. Further, since the taxpayers pay for the fuel for these ambulances, and with a high price of fuel, it is even more disturbing to think of roving fire department ambulances. I hope that either Mayor Perez or someone on the council will, will look into this and get back to me with an explanation of how these little jaunts are occurring, wasting taxpayers' money. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Before we move, on, thank the members of the public who uh, addressed the council tonight. It's uh, input such as yours that uh, makes our meetings uh, truly worthwhile. Appreciate that very much. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and lying between North Avenue and Calumet Drive. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? This is a public hearing if you would like to address the council. Yes, sir, please come up. And can I have your name and address, sir? My name is Milton Storm, and I reside at uh, 1736 Marvin Court for 43 years and have been a resident of the city of Sheboygan for 51 years. Okay, go ahead. I'm in favor of the vacation, or vacating and discontinuing the portion of the North 21st Street between North Avenue and Kellymet Drive. Now here's my suggestion for the future. I was thinking about maybe eliminating the stop and go lights and let's go to a roundabout. We've been, been educated with this in the city of Sheboygan. Now this thing would have to have at least three lanes and be labeled properly. The center lane would be for Kellymet Drive and it would be continuous. The uh, left turn lanes would have to be yielded or stop sign, and the right turn lanes, the outer lane, would have to also have a yield sign. It will be made adaptable for the year 2039 if the populace so desires, and then Calumet Drive could go straight through, and North Avenue could be an overpass with existing ramps and, or without ramps. My plan is in my head and in my computer mind and hasn't been made on the uh, drawing board yet, but uh, I'm getting there. Now this may reduce the salary of the city plan commission and I'm sure that Paulette Enders would be kind of 
disappointed that her salary would be freeze for the year 2025. Of course, my plan would come with instructions, so you know how to use it. My plan would be need to be re reviewed first with former Alderman Re Rene Shusha and possibly the Honorable Mayor. I'm sure that I have trouble sometimes with Honorable, but then I think you all would have the same pr trouble calling me Your Majesty or Your Excellency. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to close the hearing. Second. Motion second to close hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One no. Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda. President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second on consent agenda 13-1 through 1321. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Verhasselt. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1322, uh, to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1323 through 1332, to be referred. Please make a notation on 1332. That is the budget that you've got tonight. Uh, the date on that uh, item there says 2010. No, 2009. Please make that correction. And you will, uh, you will have received your budget today. I want to just point out a few things here before we uh, refer it. The budget as it stands in your hands to preliminary budget by that I mean that I'm not done. As you will recall, last year we balanced the budget three times. Well, this year, balancing the budget has been an extremely difficult thing to do. We continue to have a dollar job, a hundred dollar job to do with fifty dollars. And folks, it's getting pretty darn near impossible to continue doing that. My staff and I, uh, along with uh, some suggestions of uh, uh, Alderman Gisha, who's chairman of finance, and Alderman Hanna, who's president of the council. Uh, we beat this thing back and forth, looked at it over and over and over again, and it's not there. So we will have to probably resort to some drastic moves, and that may include, or may not include, but probably uh, some potential layoffs. I tried my best not to even consider that, not to make that consideration, but as it stands now, the revenue does not match our expenditures. Our expenditures, as you know, go up automatically every year. Light goes up, gas goes up, automatic salaries uh, uh, go, go up, wages and salaries, premium, bene premium shares go up, benefits, as you say, health benefits, costs all go up, everything goes up every year automatically, and our revenue has not been increasing that much. So we've had some uh, We've, we've been able to pull some good rabbits out of the hats for the last uh, several years, uh, but we, we're, we're, we're almost at the end here, and we're going to have to resort to some pretty drastic measures uh, within the next week. This budget is going to finance. By that time, by the time the finance committee meets, I will probably have the balanced budget. Bear in mind, there will be some, some drastic uh, moves that will have to be made uh, to balance that budget. As it stands now, the preliminary deficit is uh, a little over a million, about $1.2 million, 1.3. Um, we do, as, as, we, as we put our budget together, uh, I'll just say real quickly, because it's, it's, it's a hard concept to understand, but expenditure restraints, we have to be very careful with that, or we don't get the state aid uh, that we do because we stay within a certain uh, gap. We do have approximately 
750,000 from health insurance costs. Uh, and we do have increased operations for the new police facility that uh, we were looking at, that we're building now, I should say. Keep in mind also that we uh, we uh, let go of about $120,000 in, in, in revenue because we re actually reduced the uh, local tax rate by, uh, by a nickel. It was a courageous move on your part, and it was courageous and responsive. For the longest time, this council, and I have worked hard myself too, to be extremely responsible, responsive to the people's pleas for tax relief. You have done an incredible job, but because we've done such a good job, we have put ourselves in a situation where now it's time where it's gonna get a little, a little, a little tough, a little tougher than it has been. Just wanted to point out that the, uh, the, the, our levy is comprised of four things, and most of you will recall when I've talked about them, we do have 60% of our money that goes to the general fund as operations that we work under. 13% of that levy goes to the library. That's been the traditional portion that goes to the library. Now, what does that mean, what does that mean in, in dollar amounts? It's about 2,651,000. 2, we also uh, appropriate about 17% to our debt service. That's money if we borrow, we need to pay it back. So we have debt service, and about 17% of our levy goes to debt service, and that translates to three million, about $3.5 million in debt service. And as you know, we also uh, appropriate for transit, and it's about, that adds up to about 3% for transit. And that's what transit has been getting traditionally for, the, for all these years. What does that tra translate into money? About $658,000. As I said, our, our expenses continue to go up automatically every year. Our revenues do not. Our people have asked us not to raise taxes. We've been very responsive. That portion stays flat. Revenue sharing from the state stays flat. So a huge percentage of our budget is, is governed already just by those decisions that have been made. Again, it is a preliminary budget. We continue to beat it. We continue to beat it and try to make it work. By next week, early next week, or at the end of this week, we should have a balanced budget. Please expect and understand that some drastic moves will have to be made. I will go back to my department heads and talk, <coughs> talk it over with them. Okay? Thank you very much. Next item, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we got some people want to speak. Um, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I've been at a couple meetings with you where we've discussed the budget, and I need to publicly thank you for the hard work and the hours you're putting into this. I don't think, I don't think Alderman and the general public realize uh, how much time and effort you put into the budget process and that how difficult this decision has been of uh, what hard decisions are going to come in front of us. Uh, and I'd be remiss uh, not to compliment uh, Terry Hansen for really hitting the ground running. I mean, coming into a new city, uh, and he's instantly been an asset in, in helping us through this process. So I hope all the aldermen will be supportive of you during this difficult time. Thank you, President Hanna. Appreciate that. And Alderman Bauck, you wish to speak, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just want to make a comment that the, uh, at least my constituents are telling me they like it when we pull rabbits out of the hat. They are very <laughs> pleased with the last three or four years of no tax increases. Uh, and, and it's interesting as we uh, contemplate the business cycle that our Sheboygan families are living through right now, high gas prices and uh, an economy that's, uh, that we're all unsure of. It's interesting on a macro level, on a large scale level in Madison and Washington, um, governments tend to isolate themselves from business cycles. They just take, take, take. And here at the local level, it's exciting to be part of a team that is saying, you know what, uh, we're not just going to take because we can't uh, during these hard business times. We're going to face the same business cycle that our neighbors do, and we're going we're to not take it. So congratulations to you uh, for your past uh, no tax increases. And I, too, want to uh, thank the department heads and the people who have been working on the health care committee. Health care costs are just skyrocketing. Uh, for our city employees, so thanks for that. Uh, I too have had some great experiences with new uh, Director Hanson. He uh, he is just a fantastic new asset for the city. And so again, thanks to, to everyone who's been putting in time. Thank you, oh. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to add to the Terry Hanson love fest. Uh, <laughs> I've appreciated his his hard work, and he has hit the ground running, and it has been helpful to the city. Um, and I've also appreciated uh, some of the meetings that we've had on the budget as. As finance chair, uh, I appreciate being brought into some of those. And um, we talk about rabbits out of a hat. This is more of a, I think, to change barnyard animals. This is more of a chicken come home to roost. Uh, you know, we have over a million dollars in additional employee expense 
in this year's budget and where we have revenues based on just appreciation of what we have about 300,000 your job is huge and I appreciate the fact that you affected the council's uh, goal of of not only balancing the budget but reducing the uh, the tax rate it's not an easy thing I know you guys have been going around and around so I just want to thank you and to challenge the department heads to come together with you for this last hurdle and we in finance look forward to your report on Monday thank you Alman Gisha okay nobody else we will move on to resolutions introduced three 1333 by Alderman Hanna, Rinfeich, Heidemann, Kittleson, and Ryan authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to participate in the grant program under the non-motorized transportation pilot program. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Gisha? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1334 by Alderman Hanna, Rinfleisch, Heidemann, Kittleson, and Ryan, authorizing the donation of obsolete traffic safety vests to the United States military for their use in the Republic of Iraq. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Horn? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1335. Lies over. 1336 through 1340 to be referred. Report of Committee 6. 1341 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8021 based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the license application, the record as a repeat law violator, and failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under, Under discussion, Your Honor, is Nicholas Brock here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Oh, very well. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Brock had two opportunities to appear before the committee, the second by certified mail. He did not uh, appear, and the committee was very concerned about his record as a repeat law violator. Mr. Brock has had 23 contacts with police since 1999. So on that basis, it was a unanimous uh, vote to deny the application. Thank you. Any other discussion on uh, 1341? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren, Falk, and Decker. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, 1342 by Finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriation for fire department gas expenses as a result of a drowning, established revenue and appropriation for donations received for July 4th celebration. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committees 9, 1343 <coughs> by the Committee of the Whole recommending creating Article 8 of Chapter 70 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the sexual offender residency restrictions and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the RC be uh, accepted and adopted and the substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. And uh, please. 
Continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, would just uh, like to, uh, again, thank the citizens for their comments tonight. I'd like to assure some of the later speakers that on a case-by-case, -case, uh, the case-by-case -case, uh, basis is absolutely provided for in the ordinance so that uh, all people who return to the city can make their... Uh, can make their petition to the Public Protection and Safety Committee and that with the 2,000 foot circles, the entire city is protected based on the addition of the words and places of worship. So uh, everything that we talked about delivering the night of the committee, the whole, uh, this, this ordinance does deliver on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. You need to say something? Yeah. Attorney McLean, I'll, I'll wait on the alderman. Let's see, Attorney McLean. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as far as the, the uh, coverage of the city, I just received the map today from Tom Hornis and Engineering. I don't know if uh, any of you shared that with any of the aldermen, uh, but for, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I note that on the extreme south end of the city, there are, according to this drawing, approximately six or seven lots. Uh, I believe in the lower portion of the Fox Meadow subdivision that are not in the shaded areas. Uh, so it's not accurate to say that every residential sub or lot in the city is covered by this. Um, I guess the, the next possible response is, okay, do we widen the circles? I, I guess you can do that. My suggestion would be if you want there to be 100% coverage of residential areas, that you consider adding additional uh, focuses, if you will, that you measure the 2,000 feet from. Uh, as I mentioned at the Committee of the Whole, I think 2,000 feet is justifiable uh, and would withstand uh, scrutiny in that that, as far as I'm aware, is the maximum that other communities have established the distance requirement at. Uh, rather than expand the distance, I guess my suggestion would be to uh, if, again, if you want to do this, uh, would be to look at coming up with another category. You know, you added places of worship. Uh, there you could perhaps add some other category so that you would have a complete coverage of all the lots. Uh, I'm not suggesting you have to do that, but, um, you know, unfortunately this map isn't large enough, so it's clear to anybody looking at it. But looking at it, it's clear that there are a couple lots in the city that aren't covered. Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, taking you in the order that you're hitting your lights. Alderman Kittleson, you're next. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I wasn't here at the Committee of the Whole meeting, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I wish I could have heard more of the conversation. But we did receive a letter here from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections with several questions, which I read through and highlighted. And I just wondered if those questions have been answered. Could someone address that for me, please? Um, I mean, Gisha? Yes, thank you. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I spoke to the, uh, the author of the letter. Uh, from the Department of Corrections yesterday, and actually the ordinance does answer all those questions. I referred her to several points in the ordinance, and if she needed additional clarification, to ask the city attorney. But the uh, the points in her letter were covered to her satisfaction. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, definitely, we do need to to take action on on covering those those lots. There, we can't. Uh, even if it's only seven lots, uh, it's, it's unfair. Um, so I don't know what the easier route will be. Um, I would think if we just increased it to the 2,500 foot radius, um, oh, I, I would think at that point that would definitely cover that. And, and we should be, uh, should be in good shape. So I, that would be the, the route. I don't, I don't want to put in an amendment to the resolution without further discussion right now, but I think that's the route that we should take because it's not fair to anybody to have any, any area that is, that is open under this ordinance. So, thank okay, you. I'm taking you as I, as I get you. Alderman, President Hanna. Thank you. A couple things. I, I think my suggestion would be tonight to pass the ordinance, we, we make a friendly amendment just to include that neighborhood and then come back at a later date uh, and, and work on uh, Attorney McLean's recommendation. But I think tonight we can solve that issue with just an amendment to that specific neighborhood, and then we should be 
we should be just fine. I also spoke to the individuals with the Department of Correction. Uh, as uh, chairman of the Public Protection and Safety and encourage them to call me if they have any follow-up questions to their letter. Okay. <clears throat> Next we have Alderman Meyer. Honor, I just wanted to thank all the people that came together to look out for our children and our community. And a special thanks to Jenny Butler, Jen, Jenny Engels, Charlie Dickey, Lisa Ferguson, and Kevin Howley. Their efforts to put together a petition drive have been phenomenal. It was successful. They had over 300 signatures, and I'm very proud to represent the people of the 7th District, and I'd like to thank them again for all their hard work. They made a huge difference. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Next we have Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do think that we need to take a look at that neighborhood. I, again, not being an attorney, but if we can simply add the language for one neighborhood, I think that is going to open us up to um, examination within lawsuits because we're not following a consistent pattern. We're going to you know, handpick a neighborhood. If that was the case, we could have done that uh, in, in, in uh, community, uh, community of the whole. Um, I also understand that the 2,500 feet may also open us that up, uh, but we have a few lots right now in that area as we continue to expand and annex in. We may not have additional uh, places of worship that are annexed in. We may not have additional school property that's annexed in or parks that are trails that are annexed in. Um, so I still would like to see the 2,500 feet so that we do protect areas as we continue to annex and, and grow as well, uh, knowing that it still may shine a bright light on our uh, resolution here. So I will make that amendment to uh, change uh, any place within the resolution that states 2,000 feet to 2,500 feet. Second. There's a motion and second. And I still have some blinking lights. There's a motion and second to change a number from 2,000 to 2,500 feet under discussion on that 2,500 feet only. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all the lights off that were initially on. We're going to go, I'm going to ask you to turn, to hit your light if you want to discuss the amendment only from 2,000 to 2,500. So they're off. Who wants to go first? Gish, you got it first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, because I wrote this, maybe I can add a little bit to it. I don't care if it's 10,000 feet, but we have to be able to defend it. And that's why uh, kind of um, dovetailing off Attorney McLean, across the country, 2,000 feet is defensible. Uh, I would prefer to see land you can't live, but you can't do that. It's the, the court's pretty clear on that. The most recent ruling in Franklin from July is very clear on that. Um, it's defensible. Um, I would ask that the amendment be, be removed and that amendment be rescind, rescinded. And I would ask that we pass the 2,000 foot child safety zones. And I would commit, as I committed a year and a half ago publicly to bring this to the council, I will commit, and there are ways of doing this. The gentleman from Green Bay, the older person from Green Bay spoke to that when he was here speaking before our committee. There are ways to include these little sliver areas, and they're not magical, and I would commit to bringing in a, um, a, an amendment to the ordinance in a, in a very short period of time to solve this problem without us getting into a legal issue with expanding beyond the 2,000 feet. Uh, it can be done. I've already talked to him about it, and uh, it, it's not that tough. And I felt the 2,000 was actually going to cover it. Okay, I missed six lots. Uh, I, can, I can fix that, and I just ask that, that we pull back on this, this amendment and al allow us to fix it. And it can be fixed quickly, and I'll, I'm committed to getting that done. Alderman Gisha is, uh, is correct. I think that if you, in this case, a motion has been made and second to amend. Uh, if you vote the mo motion down to keep it cleaner, pass it as is, come back, think it over, see how you want to cover that area so that you don't uh, put yourself in a, in, a, in a potential legal bind, come back later, reintroduce the amendment, or introduce the amendment, and it'll keep it very clean. A suggestion, I agree with uh, Alderman Gisha. We have Alderman Bourne. Next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, Attorney McLean, would, would the additional 500 feet uh, block out those, those lots or not? Uh, yeah, I don't have scale. Well, 
no, I don't see a scale on here, uh, Alderman Bourne, but uh, it looks like, yes, 500 feet would cover all the lots. Uh, you know, maybe 200 feet would cover the lots. I can't really. Okay. Uh, can you give me a no. Can you give me a better idea of ex and the public exactly where those lots are? Right along the lake shore, or is it, or is it west? No, where is it? They are to the southwest. Uh, this is the south half of the city of Sheboygan, and I believe this is the Fox Meadows subdivision here. I'm not positive of that. Can't can't read it, but there there are about six or seven lots on the very south end of that subdivision that aren't in some of these. Where, where is business drive on there as a reference? Or it, South business drive goes So it would here. be it would be right around where cro Crossroads is down there where those right. yes in that area there okay just uh, southeast of Crossroads. All right, thank you. All in the Cuyunas district. Okay, we done. Yes, thank, yes. You. thank you. Next we have Alderman Balk. Thank you, Your Honor. I just ask, uh, does it put us at more legal risk? Uh, could we pass the 2500 tonight and two weeks later rescind the 2500, make it 2000, and put in the wording? W would it raise any immediate flags? Would those industrious ACLU lawyers be able to act quickly, uh, faster than we would be able to, uh, um, to change it? Yes. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to, because obviously the thing we're weighing is, is do we leave six lots unprotected for two weeks, which is about how long it would take till our next meeting? Uh, do we leave six lots unprotected and leave ourselves less vulnerable to uh, outside lawsuits? Or do we pass the 2,500 feet, cover everybody as of tonight, and two weeks later, change it? And would that uh, make us, you know, then no longer vulnerable? Do you know how those lawsuits work, uh, Attorney McLean? Would that, w once we change that, would that make us less vulnerable again? Or once we, once we touch 2,500, does that make us vulnerable? Thank well, you, Your Honor. You know, there's no magic to this. I mean, uh, I'm not Attorney saying. McLean? Excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not saying that 2,500 will, you know, instantly draw somebody's attention. But uh, I think once your ordinance gets out there, it gets on the internet, and that could be a draw, you know, it could be a red flag to somebody. I'm not saying it will be, but, uh, you know, I guess my preference, I, I would favor uh, Alderman Gish's approach. Uh, I think there's some other way to address that without increasing the distance. Uh, and, and I only speak from the standpoint of uh, reducing the city's risk of being sued. I think you're a lot safer and I feel a lot more comfortable for the city if we're in a pack, in a group, as opposed to being the one outlier. Uh, I think, you know, uh, there's the approach to coming up with some other uh, uh, physical item that you could refer to in the ordinance where you measure uh, 2,000 feet from or something like that. Uh, I'd prefer to see something like that rather than 25. Okay, on. thank you, Attorney McClain. Just a quick follow-up then. Yes. I didn't uh, move to open the floor to our friends from the Department of Corrections that are here tonight. Just ask them, in the next two to four weeks, do they have any intentions of releasing any more sex offenders into our, our city? I'd like to know that answer before we vote tonight. Is are there, there, are there any pending open, releases? Is there a second to opening up the floor? Second. Motion and second under discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Who is here from the state? Please, please come up. Hi, could I get your name, please? Sure, Vicki Seibel Garvey. Pardon me? Vicki Seibel Garvey, S E I B as in boy, E L hyphen G A R V E Y. Okay. And this is Kendra Heary. Kendra. H -E -E -R -E -Y. Okay. Go ahead. Um, there would be no people that we are aware of that would not fall under the grandfather clause of the provision at this time. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Very quick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Then with that, just one last follow. <laughs> um, then with that, knowing that answer, then uh, I think I feel much safer keeping us below the radar. I just want to be very clear to the people in those six lots. The city of Sheboygan is not 
doing this intentionally. We're gonna, we're gonna fix it very, very fast. Our intention, I, I won't speak for the council, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I believe that uh, we want to work hard to cover the entire city and that may take two weeks, but we're gonna get it done. Thank, Thank you. you Mr. Pope. And we're still on the amendment and next we got two more. We have all of them in place. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I understand the concerns about, oh, it's only two weeks. Let's move forward. Um, I, I guess I, I have some doubts on if we can find language that way. The growth of the city is going to be to the north and to the south. We're kind of hampered to the east and west by a lake and by the highway. Um, but as the growth has continued in those directions, we're not necessarily building in the city houses of worship. We're not building new trails. We're not building a new school properties uh, in that direction. Um, so I guess I would rather see 2500 to protect those areas and perhaps defend it if, if need be uh, for that aspect than try to find some creative uh, new property out there, which I think is, is creating, uh, again, another way that we can be out there and having to defend ourselves. I and mean, we can't say within 2500 feet or 2000 feet of every tree, every sidewalk, every fire hydrant in the city, we have to have some basis of logic behind why we're going to do that. And I fail to see out in the current farm fields out there where that's going to be. As someone that represents that district, I would hope that we still keep it at 2500 feet. I understand a concern, it's up to a vote. Second point again, I um, just want to point out um, that if the chairperson of the committee would like to make statements and give direction to uh, the council, uh, Robert's Rules requ uh, requires, which we follow, that the chair uh, person step aside, turn the, sh the microphone over, and uh, uh, address us another way. I only say that because, again, um, the phrase, keep it clean, vote it down, uh, I don't know the exact words, again, came out. Uh, and I appreciate the input of that, uh, but I think just to keep it technically clean, if uh, the chairperson uh, in this position, the mayor, would uh, address it uh, and turn the microphone over to, to perhaps the president at that point in time or the chair at that point in time. Because uh, the input is valuable. I just I don't want to see that line cross necessarily of when the chairperson is chairing the committee versus uh, perhaps giving some input uh, that's outside of that chair. So uh, I urge, you know, again, formally, discussion openly, uh, with no offense, meant that uh, we do that in the, in the future. Thank you. If you will call me tomorrow, Alderman Rinkleish, I'll direct it to the section of the city code that says that the mayor is free to give advice on any items that he feels is important to the council. So please call me. I will uh, share that with you if you haven't read that. Thank you. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> if I recall correctly from the uh, committee of the whole meeting, uh, the alderman from Green Bay said that the city of Green Bay is not 100% blocked out, but the if I rem if I recall correctly, he said the neighborhoods that are not blacked out are affluent neighborhoods where the Department of Corrections wouldn't be likely to place anybody because they couldn't afford to do so. So that's one of the thing to keep in mind. Whether this these these lots that we're talking about down there, if they're an affluent area, and I guess I don't know exactly what the definition of affluent is but they feel comfortable up in Green Bay that the, the small area that's not completely covered, uh, they feel safe that nobody would be placed there for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. And we have one more, Alderman Gisha, on the amendment. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Bourne is 100% correct in that. Um, there are slivers of Green Bay that are, that are areas that don't, didn't have any before and likely wouldn't have any. This is one of those areas, so I think it could withstand a couple of weeks, a month at the most, of um, coming up with uh, some of the fixes that Green Bay dealt with. Um, and uh, to, to correct some thoughts, actually you can make it 2,000 feet from curbs, sidewalks, and fire hydrants, but there is a fix for that neighborhood that, that doesn't necessarily need to include that. And um, I ask that, we, that we, we pass it as is for all the reasons stated by Attorney McLean and others and we vote down the amendment and we, we allow the fix. I, I took this seriously a year and a half ago and I take it very seriously now. And I take those six lots, whether they even have a house on them or not, I'm not even sure we're sure about that. But assuming they do, I take those six houses extremely seriously and, uh, and, and I'm committed to a fix and I'm confident there is a, a, a fairly simple fix to this. Thank you. Thank you very much. No more discussion on the amendment only. Please call the roll. Everybody clear on what the amendment is? <coughs> it goes from 2,000 to 2,500 feet, and I vote would do that. Okay, first we have Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson? No. No. Clionis? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Ryan? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhassel? Aye. Uh, Boren? No. Bauk? No. Decker? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. <coughs> Three ayes, 11 noes. Motion fails. We are back to 1343. It was made to accept and adopt and pass a substitute resolution. Vice President Boren? Under discussion. Thank you, Renner. Uh, before we vote on this, I just want to thank uh, Alderman Gisha for all of his hard work on this for the last year and a half. Uh, I went to Alderman Gisha's first meeting slash pr press conference on this back at uh, Fountain Park Restaurant a year and a half ago, and it was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, Alderman Gisha's opponent when he was running for Alderman Bruce Christensen, who was a former police officer, was there to give uh, Alderman Gisha his support for the concept of coming up with this ordinance. So again, I just want to thank uh, Alderman Gisha for all his hard work. Also like to thank uh, Attorney McLean for all the legal ease work on this, on this ordinance also. It's also appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is no more discussion. Please call roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhassel, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 1344, and 45 lies over. 1346 and 47 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 1224, RO <coughs> number 20204809, by the City Plan Commission for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 21st Street located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and lying between North Avenue and Calumet Avenue. <coughs> Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. <coughs> Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clayunas. Aye. 13 <coughs> ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1239, resolution number 111-0809 by Alderman Ryan, authorizing the execution of an agreement with the Wisconsin State Historical Society designated Sheboygan as a certified local government. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1240, resolution number 1120809 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Bauk, Boren, and Montemayor authorizing a, a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriations for police department dive team equipment damaged or lost as a result of drowning. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this $617 is half of the expense and uh, Sheboygan County will be picking up the uh, other half as the uh, Sheboygan Police and Sheboygan Sheriff's di Dive Team is a shared service. So they're picking up half, we're picking up half. Good point, Vice President Warren. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, any more discussion on 1240? There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, and Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1257, resolution number 1130809 by Alderman Hannah, Meyer, Montemayor, and Vanderweel, directing a public hearing to be held in connection with a change of the zoning map for property located at 2019 and 20, or through 2021 North Avenue. President Hannah, motion to put the resolution. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. We can do an all eyes on that. You need an all eyes? Sure. Okay, we're just going to take a, roll, a voice vote. 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1251, General Ordinance Number 560809 by Alderman Montemayor, Zurich, Meyer, and Decker, amending the municipal code so as to create the job description and job code of the confidential secretary to the finance director and eliminate the secretary finance and purchasing. Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1348 will be referred to uh, finance and joint municipal court, 1349 to finance and salary and grievances, 1350 a resolution by Alderman Gisha and Bauk to provide, raises, to provide for raises for non-represented employees for 2009. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I ask that we uh, have a suspension of the rules uh, for item 1350. Um, reason for this. Would you like to make a motion? I would like to make a motion. Is there a for second to that? Please? Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any objection? Yes. One objection. Then we'll, we'll, we'll take a vote. You need uh, two thirds or three quarters? I need two thirds. Two, two thirds vote, total vote. Three quarters. Three quarters? Three quarters vote. On, we need a three quarters vote on the on the uh, suspension of the rules because there's been objections. We will take a vote, but we're under discussion right now. All in uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to hear the explanation uh, before we vote on the um, suspension uh, to or the objection on the suspension to see if it's something that we do need to act on immediately. Thank you. Okay, Alderman um, Gisha, would you please explain? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, and I was starting to do that when all the buzzers kicked in. The uh, <laughs> the the reason for this is because for twofold. One is we have um, a limbo situation for, for the non-reps personally for 09. Two, we have a limbo situation for a budget that's got to be done on Monday to, for the Finance Committee. And without solid non-rep pay numbers for pay and benefits, we have less of a chance to have an accurate budget for Monday at the Finance Committee. So it's one of those crunch time number things. Uh, we, We've gone over this several times uh, with, with little resolution of its previous path. This is a path to resolve it. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Discussion? Alderman Ranch by second time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my comment would be that um, obviously it seems to be too late at this point in time to go to the Committee of the Whole. We did have a meeting scheduled. I just did not have enough information to discuss that at the Committee of the Whole meeting. But something this important dealing with the city budget. Um, I'd like to have further discussion. Obviously, it can't seem to happen at this point in time. I'll still vote in favor of the uh, objection to it, but uh, I do understand the, uh, the motivation behind it. Thank you. Okay. Alma Gisha, second time. Thank you. Just, uh, just to note, if, uh, if the rules uh, uh, are voted on by two-thirds to be suspended, I would also like to offer an amendment. So uh, three -fourths. It's so actually three-quarters. Three we three need 12 votes. Pardon me. With That's okay. Number, I would like to... Very good. Thank you. Any more discussion on the suspension of the rules? Please call the roll. Uh, Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Rinfleisch. No. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Didn't pass. Motion fails. Yeah. Attorney McLean? Yeah, that, that's, that's accurate. It requires three quarters of the members of elect, which would be 12. So which would be 12, right. correct. That's right. right. Not the, the other two still get counted in. Okay, motion fails. Uh, we will move on. So we need to do something with this document then? Uh, Alderman Gisha, would you like to refer this to uh, salary and grievances? What would you like to, or committee of the whole, what would you like to do? Alderman Gisha? I would like to do nothing. Okay. I will refer to the uh, uh, back to salary and grievance, and then unless Alderman Bauk, you'd like to take it? Alderman Bauk? 
No, Your Honor. I think salary and grievances has kicked the cat twice, and this is a chance for them to, to really deliver it right. Thank I you. Think so too. Thank you, Elmer Bout. Uh, Vice President Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just so I'm clear on referring this to salary and grievances, is this going, is this going to give you enough time to, to uh, do what we have to do with the budget without having uh, a, pay, a pay plan in place for the non-reps? Are we going to have to hold this in abeyance to the next council meeting? How are you going to be able to deal with the budget if you don't have the, the pay plan for the non-reps? I will have to make assumptions uh, as reasonable as I can and perhaps plead with the chairman of finance and salaries, uh, salaries and grievances that maybe they can have a, a quick meeting soon. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. 1350 will be referred to salary and grievances. Please make the notation. 1351 lies over. 1352. Uh, does not lie over. Please make a notation that it will be referred to public protection and safety. 1353 lies over. 1354 goes to City Plan Commission. Oh. Oh, here, notes. 1355, an RO by the City Plan Commission recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Blue Line Sheboygan stating that they were considering the option to purchase the land they are currently leased and are informing the city that they are hiring an engineering firm to do soil borings. Alderman Montemayor, would you like to take 56 to Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, please. Um, agenda item number 1355 and agenda item number 1356. I move that the ROs be accepted and filed. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1357, an RO by the City Plan Commission recommended authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an acknowledgement and consent to a cross easement agreement. Alderman Montemayor, again. Thank you again. I move to accept and file the RO and the re resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Clayonis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1358, an RO by the City Plan Commission recommending granting Jack Vanderweel, Vanderweel the, uh, the privilege of encroaching upon portions of Indiana Avenue at 1136 Indiana Avenue for the purpose of constructing and maintaining steps. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Vanderweel. For Hassel. Aye. Boren. Boak. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunis. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Rinfleisch. And Ryan. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1359 uh, lies over to October 20th. Please make that notation. 1360, an, an RO by the city clerk granting various license application. I need a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1361 goes to Transit Commission. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 1362 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That goes to Law and Licensing. 1363 is communication submitting petitions from various members of the public both inside the city and out, stating that they object to the sex offender residency proposal, which would allow registered sex offenders to move to the pocket from Superior to Salmon between North 20th and North 29th Street. They, that will go to Public Protection Safety Committee. 1364 is an ordinance repealing section 29-115 of the 1975 Municipal Code relating to the salary wage compensation program for non-representative employees. That lies over. Need a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>